Holy Wire Mod. Holy Wire Mod here, and this is going to be video 6C in the Lua series, where we're going to be continuing swept and going over melee swept. Or more specifically, we're going to be making a vampiric crowbar. And this crowbar is going to drain the health from whatever our target is and give it to us. I know, how sinister. Anyway, so let's define the instructions. So it's going to be whack a player when you left click or in PC too, it doesn't really matter, we're going to do both. And we need to change the view model to a crowbar and the world model to a crowbar as well. The hold type needs to be set to melee and we're going to not draw a crosshair, so we're going to put this false. Slot's going to be zero as we already have the revolver as one. And then we're going to be getting rid of all this and just copy and paste in here because our crowbar does not need ammo unless you have a super special rocket launching crowbar which I don't know about please send it to me if you have it you can contact me on here and all that fun stuff so let's start defining variables because this is all the basic nonsense that we have to get through or we'll say uh, so we'll say local and we're going to need a sound when we miss the target and this is going to be a swinging noise which can be found in a list of sounds which I'm going to provide in the description below so do not fret if you do not know where I'm grabbing all this stuff from and then we're going to have a sound which plays when you actually hit someone so we're going to have weapon crowbar melee underscore hit and then we need a sound for them to say ouch uh, we don't have one of those, so we'll make do. We'll say function swept because we're going to start our functions, and just as last time, we're going to initialize. And this is just to re-emphasize the point and remind you that you can set a weapon hold type down here or up above. You can do it with other things. So say this is the same as this, you can do either or. I'm going to do both so you can learn more things, all right? All right, so here is function swept, and we're going to put primary attack. So what is this going to do when we primary attack or left click by default? For you weirdos who do not left click for your primary attack. So if this is being seen from the client, then return and and that's pretty much all this the clients gonna see however if it's being run server side we're going to say player or we're going to define our player as self which is reference of the swap and whoever has that swap we're going to get the owner of that or whoever's holding the swap it'll get the player so we're going to do our lag compensation before we get into the meat and bones of this and then control D and remember to always turn lag compensation off at the end always turn always 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 if you didn't hear me always turn this off or else you can have trouble okay now that is emphasized let's start with defining some more variables because this is where it really differs okay so we're going to need something called a hull trace method and for us to be able to do the hull trace method we need to define these beforehand all right or it's just uh, nicer looking if you do define them beforehand. So we're going to get the shoot position of the player, which is the same as calling int i position for those who are curious, as it returns an aim vector. And then we're going to make another vector here, which is end shoot position, which is going to take the shoot position plus the player's get aim vector. All right and times a multiplier. So get aim vector returns the direction that the player is aiming, whereas this multiplier tells how many units out our melee weapon is going to actually find a target and strike them, okay? So this is saying 70 units. If you want it 10 times as much, you put 700. If you want a tenth, you put seven. If you want double, you want put 140. Congratulations, you, you will pass math class, okay? Good, so let's define then T min, which is going to act as the minimum boundary for a box which we're going to be using so we need vector format right here we're going to put negative 10 because it's a minimum value so we want it to be negative just to be 
just for simplicity's sake here. Yes, yeah, so I was thinking about you, simplicity. All right, so then we're going to put the max, which is going to be the upper bounds of the box. And then we're going to be getting to the actual hold trace. All right, so a oh, hold trace comes from the util library. So you put trace hull, and it's also represented in table format. So we're going to need to define some things. All right, so let me actually make this simple for you. I'm going to go here. Whoops, why did I do that? Here we go. So we go here, and here's the things we're going to be using. We're going to be using start, which is the start position of the trace. So think of it as the beginning point of a line. Then the end position is going to be where the line ends, seven units in front of you when you're swinging. Then we're going to use max s, which is going to be using the t min and t max values, so min s, max s, and these are going to be the values to represent the corners of a box. We're going to use filter to say what we do not want to grab or what data we do not want, and we're going to use mask to specify what data we do want or what information we want to grab from the trace, okay? So I know it's kind of confusing at first, but just bear with me, it'll make sense. All right, so we're going to say the start position or the start of our line is the shoot position. Remember to end with a comma at the end because this is a table. So we put end shoot position. That's going to be our end position. We're going to filter out our self, okay? Because we don't want to accidentally hit ourself and then deal damage to ourselves and kill ourselves. I mean, this, we're not trying to do uh, the samurai stuff, you know, sepeku or whatever, what is it called? It doesn't matter. Anyway, so we're going to say mask shot hull, and that's going to be our mask. Now, what is mask shot hull? We can go here and see that mask shot hull right here is anything that stops a bullet, excluding hitboxes, okay? So if it hits a player or if it hits a wall or if it hits something, uh, it'll grab that as an entity and return that. But again, we will see that in a second. So that's what we're going for. Then we're going to say the min s is equal to t min and max s as you guessed it, t max. All right, simple enough. So now what happens is that you can actually grab Of a, um, a result from this. So a line goes out and let's say it hits a player or it hits an entity. Well, we're going to grab that entity that this line hits and we're going to assign it to entity, right? Or int, just a variable. So we know who the target is, right? But before we actually do that, there's two things. First, I want to go into here. This is trace result structure. So this is why I'm putting tr.int. It's to say that tr right here and then say from that trace or that whole trace called TR I'm going to be grabbing entity here so I'm going to be grabbing this entity the entity hit by the trace All right so I know I'm overemphasizing that but I really want you to understand this okay so we're also going to have here a backup option in case the whole trace hole did not work so we're going to say if so say either not or it can use exclamation point. I'll put not in this right here. And then we'll say tr entity. So if the entity that we traced or whatever we hit, let's say we swung it at the air, it didn't get an entity, um, this is what this is for. Then, so it's going to be grabbing entity by trace. And we're going to say tr is equal to util trace line so this is going to be like a backup like I said and then we're going to say start is equal to shoot position and pause is equal to in shoot position filter is going to be play and mask is going to be mask shot hull so why did I do this again uh, I did say it's a backup, yes, it is. However, the difference between this trace line and trace hull is this is sending a 20 by 20 box defined by here, 
can see it's sending a box out in front of you, whereas this is sending a single line out in front of you, okay? So if one of these fails, the other one will pick it up and assign that entity to this variable int. So this is all for gathering what your target is, okay? It's a little bit more difficult than a firearm, which is why I chose to do this second. So anyway, now what happens if when we actually grab the entity? All right, so we're going to set check is the entity that we just grabbed a valid entity? If true, and the entity, let's put another set of parentheses here. So this is going to be an or statement here. I don't know why I did that, but oh well. Entity is player. So is the entity a player or is it an NPC? Because those are the only two entities for simplicity's sake that we are concerned with. All right, so then you say then. I'm going to end it here just so I don't forget. So what's going to happen when you actually hit an entity, you hit a player, you hit an NPC? Well, we're going to make an attack animation happen. So we'll say send weapon enum, which is going to force a weapon animation. And you have a list of weapon animations and stuff like this in Acts enumerations. You can look that up in the reference section. Right here, the reference section of an, under enumerations. And it'll give you a whole list. Uh, it's kind of difficult to go and find all these in that giant list, so I'm just going to tell you which ones to use. So we'll say act underscore VM hit center. Okay, and that's going to tell our crowbar to go and hit the center. And then we're going to say player set animation player underscore attack one. Oops, this is case sensitive, so you know. And this is going to set a third person weapon animation in order to start an attack. So essentially, it's very common to see this in swaps uh, when you're doing an attack animation. And also, we want to emit a sound, right? Because it'd be kind of weird that we just hit something and didn't make noise. So this is going to be our hit sound that we defined above at the beginning. And then the entity that we hit, we're going to set the health of that entity to its current health minus 25 and immediately after follow with a check. If the health of the entity is less than one, then we're going to kill that entity. So just a very simple way to do it to get the point of cross. And then we're going to say player set health. And now I'm going to introduce a math function to you called the clamp. So what the clamp does is it takes the first argument, which is some random value. So we're going to put the health of the player. And we're going to add 10. So when all this goes through, the player's health is going to be set to player health plus 10. However, this value cannot go beneath 1. And it cannot go above the player's max health. So we're going to say get max health. And if you remember from a little while ago, a couple videos ago, we set the max health right here to t uh, 200 and the team set up that Lua. All right, so, so this is pretty much saying, just to recap, so we're going to get the player's health and we're going to add 10. Once we do that, we're going to make sure that it's between 1 and 200. If it's over 200, it will be set to 200. If it's less than 1, it'll be set to 1. And then we're going to actually set the health to that value with this command. Okay? All right. So that's all we're going to be doing for this part of the if statement. So we're going to need an another if statement saying if it's not valid. Remember, same thing as doing this, but this time I'll do it this way. So show you or expose you to both methods. 
So we're going to say, is it valid? If it's not, then self weapon. So actually, I'm just going to save some time and copy and paste this. So we're going to be using this, except instead of hit center, it's going to be miss center. And you're still going to be using the same player attack one. And also, we're going to be admitting a sound right here is going to be swing sound. So when we miss or there is an invalid entity from this trace hole result, it's going to produce a swinging sound instead. All right. Looks good. All right. So we don't need this end after all. Sorry, end. So next we're going to set the next primary fire to the occur time, if you recall from the last video, plus the sequence duration. And just to be safe, I'll put a plus 0.1. All right. So that's going to be everything except for this last little part, which is function swept can secondary attack. I really don't have a use for a secondary attack in this tutorial. I mean, I guess we can make it something interesting, but for now, we'll just keep it simple, keep it to the point. So that's going to be everything we need. So we're going to save it as, instead of, oops, I'm going to go up here to weapons, and we're going to call this weapon the vamp crowbar. All right, so let's actually copy that as well. Save that, vamp crowbar underscore Lua. Now the only thing we have to do next is go to team setup and add in the vamp crowbar for both teams. So when we go and test that everything will be fine and it will be ready to use. So I do that, copy paste it just in case we get the blue team, we'll put it here. All right, and everything should be set up. So I'm going to get the server up and running. All right, so we're just getting inside the game right now, and there is a Lua error. So let's go address that real quick. It says line 70, expected to close line blah, 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 near in position. All right, so pretty much we forgot a comma. That's very simple. Remember to put your commas in tables, very important. So we're going to save that, and I'm going to kill myself. See if the weapon works now. All right, we got a swing, that's good. Got a sound, and let's add a bot so we can start hitting them. All right, so we added a bot by typing bot into the command console. And here's a bot, so we whacked him. It took away 25 of his life and gave me 10 HP. So let's do that over and over again. All right, and now notice that the last hit, it didn't put me over 200, which is good because that means the math clamp function here is working. It's not letting me exceed max health. And also set health is reducing by 25%. Everything looks good. And I'd say it's a very successful test. Now, there are other things you can add to a melee weapon. This is just a very, very basic tutorial. I know it's uh, about 20 minutes long, but uh, I can't really cover everything you can do in a melee weapon and a tutorial will just take way too long. But if you have any more questions, let me know, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.